everyone. My name is Gina Acosta, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Progressive Grocer, and I am so excited to be with you here today, um, joined by Carol Lehman, President and CEO of Exonify, to talk about something that is just, you know, critically important, and that is how to solve all of the labor challenges in grocery, right? So I think we all know that the pandemic has had long-lasting effects on the grocery industry, and especially when it comes to labor, you know, food retailers have hired hundreds of thousands of employees uh, to manage all of the surge, you know, and the demand, you know, for food and other products uh, that are really, you know, just taxing stores, taxing warehouses, uh, taxing, you know, supply chains a lot and, you know, just, you know, on the front line. So uh, and this winter surge of Omicron really feels like we're kind of a little bit going back to to March of 2020 uh, when we were having a lot of, uh, you know, shortages and, uh, when it comes to staffing and all of that. So, um, you know, I know that a lot of companies out there are hustling to get through this Omicron surge and some are already working to change their labor models, you know, to avoid similar challenges in the future, you know, for the next Omicron or COVID or whatever uh, gets thrown at us, right? So Carol is the perfect person to shed light on how uh, grocers can reimagine their labor operations. Uh, she's an award-winning thought leader, you know, with an impressive track record of successfully leading, you know, several tech companies. And she's also, you know, CEO and president, as I said, of Exonify, the brains uh, behind this amazing workforce uh, training solution, uh, which many grocers uh, now use and, you know, helps companies, you know, with recruiting and retraining and, and engaging uh, the frontline workforce. So she is uh, an amazing uh person to talk about this and, and a friend and I'm just I'm, so, I'm thrilled that she's here to talk to us today. So Carol, welcome. Thank you, Gina. I am thrilled to be back talking to you too, especially about it's such an important topic. Indeed, indeed. So so let me just start out, Carol, by asking you, you know, what are the staffing and talent challenges that grocers are facing right now at this stage of the pandemic? <laughs> Well, you know, as you just mentioned, back in March of 2020, there was just a massive hiring surge in grocery as everybody was trying to get their arms around what was going on and restaurants were closing and people were starting to cook more at home. And that surge was met with a workforce. But as we've seen time go on, and as we have heard about so often the great resignation, what's happened is we're now seeing the opposite. Uh, grocery entities are having a really difficult time finding people and retaining people in, in uh, an era of this pandemic where they need them still and possibly more than ever. So finding, retaining, training, all elements of that are extremely challenged right now with the labor force being what it is. So how would you say that um, grocers are trying to stand out when it comes to hiring, you know, to recruit not just enough people, but the right people? Yeah, you know, again, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, we saw lots of press about an extra 25 cents an hour bonuses. Um, more flexibility brought into the workplace. Now, um, you know, all of those things are pretty much everybody's doing them. And so standing out has become increasingly important. And what we're seeing is a trend to making the entire work experience. So not just what you're paid, not just when you work, but all elements of that work experience um, be improved and conveyed to those people you're trying to recruit and retain so that the experience they have day in and day out feels different than it would for um, another employer. You know, one thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning was that amazing uh, research that you guys put out, I think it was in October or November, um, that cited, you know, that burnout was a, a top reason for a lot of grocery frontline workers um, leaving their jobs, you know, something that it's not just about pay, right? It's not just about wages. Uh, a lot of people are just burned out. So I forgot to mention that, but uh, thank you for that research. That was incredible. So, um, so how, Carol, how does a, let's talk about onboarding, right? How does a great onboarding experience uh, support the efforts that you talked about? Onboarding is the first impression. 
people often have of the business and what that work experience is going to be like. So doing something, again, that's very different than old traditional onboarding is essential to that attraction piece. And, you know, the old ways of, as I had described to me um, a year and a half ago of hiring somebody, getting them to agree to join, and then forcing them to sit down and watch nine hours of videos on every possible thing they might need to know is just not the experience that employees want to have. They need to be, uh, it needs to be engaging. It needs to be approachable. It needs to be delivered in a way that's accessible to them. And we're seeing lots of changes uh, almost in the complete opposite direction than that nine hour video experience. And so uh, just the pace of change, the rapidity with which you need to get people onboarded and activated and performing in the role means big changes to that onboarding experience and, and making it digestible, accessible, relevant to the individual's role, all of those things um, that are not the peanut butter approach and the fire hose approach. Right, right, exactly. So where does traditional uh, onboarding fall short in grocery specifically? So especially when, you know, businesses are short staffed and struggling to hire and, and, and re, you know, retain workers. Yeah, that is a really great question. You know, it takes a different mindset to now think about with the labor shortage, how do we think about hiring people who don't necessarily have grocery experience, but they've got skills and abilities and a willingness to learn that allows us then to take that gold nugget and polish it within our environment. So traditional hiring would often look at, um, you know, have they worked somewhere else in that particular role? Have they been a cashier somewhere else? Have they been a deli associate somewhere else? Right. Uh, what is that body of experience? So that mindset needs to change um, pretty dramatically. And then also, um, cross thinking about cross skilling and upskilling people at the beginning not sometime later down the road, but how could I leverage the aptitude, the skills and abilities, the motivation that individual has early and identify those things early so that if I need somebody to work in one department in the morning and somewhere else in the afternoon, uh, because something in the business happens, that I have people who can work cross-functionally within the business, within the store, and uh, I'm not left um, hanging with nobody who can fulfill that role. So all of those things from, from an onboarding perspective need to be thought about early in the process, whereas they weren't thought about at all, or they were much later in that cycle. Right, right. So what would you say are sort of the critical components of a great uh, onboarding for frontline workers? I think it needs to be um, very personalized, short. Uh, it needs to be not everything that that person could possibly want or need to know. So I think it needs to be a thoughtful experience where you are delivering the priority items in a short, digestible, I mean, it's everywhere now, micro learning as right. a way to get people to retain knowledge. So do it in a way that is um, something people don't get overwhelmed with, is relevant to the role that you're hiring them for, and then just continuously build on it. And we're now starting to see a trend to having that experience extend just prior to the individual actually starting the job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you have a way to deliver them knowledge and information to prepare them for their first day? And that's another way to engage them in that, you know, broadly speaking, uh, onboarding experience to encourage them to feel good about who they've just signed up to work for and then show up on their first day of work ready to go. Gotcha, gotcha. So what, how, what role does technology play in onboarding for grocery stores? 
change a little bit. Yeah, it's critically important. Uh, You know, it's it's definitely moved away, um, you know, in many organizations from purely classroom based, although that's still very prevalent, unfortunately, in a lot of places to um, computer based training modules. But those tend to be that nine hour experience I referenced where they're old, they're not necessarily relevant to the business today. Um, they become overwhelming for the learner. So technology and advances in technology, you know, mobile devices, people need to learn in the aisle now, not yeah. on break, not in Absolutely. the break room, you yeah. know, not guessing or asking their, their fellow coworkers. So technology needs to be in the pocket, um, in the moment of need and delivering the right information as quickly as possible. So that employee feels confident they can access the information exactly when they need it and get the right answer. And, you know, advances in technology have allowed that to happen. Um, We've also seen, you know, from a tech perspective, stores move way up the curve in terms of Wi-Fi and just bandwidth issues, being able to play video, um, all of those sorts of things. Still lots of room to grow there. Pandemic has pushed it, but uh, allowing employees to use mobile devices, access knowledge in the moment of need, having the right knowledge bases there that are current, that involve uh, individual participation and input even from the employee who's actually doing the job Technology's allowed all of those things. Now employers need to catch up. Yeah, absolutely. So how can grocers um, create an onboarding experience that sets new associates up for success while getting people into the operation as quickly as possible? I think employers, you know, really need to tap the knowledge and the experience of managers. I, I um, you know, hear lots of anecdotal stories about how learning, training, onboarding, all aspects of that get come down from on high. They come down from the CHRO, um, you know, HR generally, and they, they don't get the feedback or the input from the people on the ground who are managing those frontline workers and truly understand what is it that they need to know right away and then can layer in as they progress through their jobs. And so in redesigning the onboarding experience, uh, organizations really need to pay attention to and leverage the knowledge and input of that management layer in a really deep way to think through how do we make it fast, personalized, accessible, relevant? How do we measure the efficacy of it? How do we do all of those things to create that experience where the employee feels supported, they feel very positive about the organization, and that this is somewhere that is um, going to help them improve in their careers, uh, which leads to retention. So, you know, it's, it's taking away all of the old, it really needs to go. The classroom needs to go long training modules need to go. It needs to be a modern experience and, and not just designed by people who aren't in the stores. You need to leverage the people in the stores. Okay. So last question, Carol, um, what's the first step? that grocers can take or should take to improve their associate onboarding? Um, I I would say interview the people who are getting onboarded and interview that management layer, understand what the current needs are and how they're changing and shifting on a daily, weekly basis. And then how do you, what, what does get people engaged immediately? Um, What would make them feel more connected to not just the organization, but the job that they're delivering for you? Um, Really take that inventory. That's the first step. And understand what's going on on the ground so that you can design the right experience 
from a learning perspective that is going to lead to the right work experience for that grocery associate. Carol, perfect. Thank you so much. I have learned so much. I've got a lot of uh, notes here to <laughs> follow up with you on and, and, you know, got lots of story ideas in my head too. So thank you so much for your time uh, and for joining us today, uh, you know, talk about talking about these critically important issues. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Gina. My pleasure.